you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, this, this enough for you to know what's up in the hood. Coffee, it's everywhere, in the hands of parents, accountants, McDonald's workers, and CEOs alike. The normally bitter drink has also sparked the interest of many teenagers with the new sugary blends that are now being normalized by big chains like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. But does the high amounts of caffeine in these drinks affect the growth of upcoming generations? And what is the real reason teens are seeking out coffee houses at a higher rate than usual? Let's find out. No matter where you go, you'll always find teens drinking coffee. Whether it's in the morning, morning train to class, walking down the street with friends, sitting in a local coffee shop, or at the Starbucks around the corner from your work. But why are teens so interested in drinking coffee? Well, there are a lot of reasons I've been drinking coffee since I first became a teenager. One reason has to do with coffee being seen as a drink for adults. My parents and other adults in my life have also drank coffee. So when I drink it, I feel more mature. Another reason I like drinking coffee as a teenager is because of all the interesting sweet drinks that are out, out there now. You can get almost any flavor you want in coffee. You can have it hot or iced, and there are even frappuccinos. And all of them still have the caffeine I want to keep me awake. But the number one reason that coffee is important to me is because coffee shops are a great way for me and my friends to hang out. Whenever I want to get together with my friends, we meet at a Starbucks or coffee house in the area and are able to have whatever drink we want while still being able to sit down together and hang out. But these are just the reasons I like coffee. How about we hear from some other teams? I started drinking coffee because I liked it. I started drinking coffee because my mom did. I started drinking coffee because like, I kind of saw my mom doing it, so I was like, you know what, let me try it. And <laughs> I started drinking coffee because I would just like to experience to see how the flavor tastes. I started drinking coffee when it was introduced by my dad, actually. Well, I started drinking coffee because my mom never really had time to make me a breakfast. In my case, I don't drink coffee for the simple fact that I was basically raised to believe that coffee isn't really good for your health. I started drinking coffee as a teenager and I used to go out with my friends to Dunkin Donuts and pick up coffee and drink coffee at night. Some of my friends drink coffee. Like I don't think anyone really pressured me. If anything, I probably pressured my mom when I was younger like, hey, when are you making coffee? One of my friends, they do drink coffee and they drink it to get them up in the morning. People my age, I have yet to see someone my age not drink coffee because like, well, the school I went to and I graduated from, everybody drank coffee. Um, other than me, <laughs> I know uh, a couple people that drink coffee my age uh, frequently, and I think it's probably like, a, I think sometimes it's, it has to do with like a morning routine kind of thing, it's a habit. Yeah, I would say my really good friend was like addicted to coffee, and it was kind of like, her, you know, status or her label of herself being a an, an coffee addict, and she was like very proud of it and like really pushed coffee for sure, and would just constantly be drinking coffee. So I think I didn't really like see anything wrong with that at the time. Looking back on it now, it's like obviously, you know, caffeine is an addictive substance as well. So if there is such a thing as having too much of it. I think that with all the sweet coffee drinks they have now, I think they're naturally desirable for teenagers because they, they like the sugar rush and a little caffeine doesn't hurt either. Yeah, I don't. I think it's a taste thing, especially because there's so many different flavors. Some people don't like cappuccinos or espressos while other people like do like that and things like that so uh, um kids going to coffee houses isn't new it's been around for years and uh first it was like 
like they had a boom box and all that and they had a coffee next to them you know but now they're on the computers and they have coffee next to them it's different a little bit but um, I know in some suburbs, uh, the coffee house experience for older adults can be somewhat marred by lots of teens coming in and suddenly taking over the place with their, with their dour faces. But that's okay. They have their world and I have mine. It's, it's okay. There wasn't really like anywhere to go to hang out in town besides Caribou Coffee, so we would go sit in Caribou Coffee. Um, I think that like coffee house culture is fine because it's like, I mean, it's just friends are hanging out where they want to hang out. They, or teens now, they just want to be, like, they want to be followers. So like, because their parents drink coffee or they see someone drink coffee, they'll be like, oh, hey, I want to try that. Because that's kind of what teens are. We're just curious kids wanting to try new things in the world. Wow, that gave a lot of insight into the different reasons teens today drink coffee. But now let's talk about something more serious. We've all heard the stories of different health risks that come with drinking coffee. Many people will say that young people drinking coffee has a negative impact on their health. But is this really true? I think that drinking coffee has health risks. Like, I've seen some really young people drink coffee. And we're talking about, like, people probably in sixth grade. I mean, the brains are still developing, if they, and if they drink it at a young age, yeah. it, it, it messes with yeah. the chemistry. Um, I had a friend once say she don't like drinking coffee because it wasn't really good for her, and she thinks that she was too young to drink, be drinking coffee. Um, one thing I heard was that if you drink a lot of coffee or, you know, you start at a young age, you get addicted. Two cups is okay. After that, it gets a little addictive. Oh, you can overdose on caffeine. And I've done it maybe once, maybe twice when I was younger. So I know that there are health risks which too, with too much of any drug. Probably if you have, like, a heart condition, the caffeine probably can't help that. Because when you're teenagers, you don't go out for a beer or anything like that. You go out for a cup of coffee because it's a drug. It is a drug. It's a very mild drug. And it's a drug that stimulates thinking. In my opinion, I'm still kind of iffy because, like, again, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't really know the effects that it will have. Well, even though those theories are commonly heard, there is no basis to any of these claims. The overall consensus from the studies is that there are no real risks that come with young people drinking coffee. In fact, there are benefits that come with having a moderate amount of coffee every day. The list of positive long-term effects goes on and on, and can protect today's teens from issues that they would not even consider taking preventative measures against for years down the line. For example, the threat of getting Alzheimer's disease is not something that's on most teens' minds. But a study from the European Journal of Neurology suggests that if one were to drink a moderate amount of coffee every day, the person would have significantly reduced the likelihood of getting Alzheimer's down the line. Similarly, coffee has also have a positive impact on the possibility of getting diabetes. In an 11-year study of postmenopausal women, it was found that the risk of getting diabetes was reduced by 22% for those who consumed six or more cups of coffee a day. The most common misconception about the long-term health risks that go along with drinking coffee comes from our parents. As I was growing up, I've been, I've been told that drinking coffee would make you shorter. They tell me I would get short. It does stunt your growth a little. They said it was going to turn out to be short. Many people hear from adults in their life throughout their teenage years that coffee stunts your growth. But this is just a myth. The only real link between a shorter height and coffee consumption is the impact that coffee's caffeine has on your sleep patterns. If you drink too much coffee too close to your bedtime, your body doesn't have the proper amount of energy to grow to your full potential. But there are not only long-term benefits to having coffee. It can also help teens with issues that are faced in day-to-day -day life. For active teenagers that are in sports, drinking two cups of coffee after exercise can cut the muscle pain by 48%. For health-conscious teenagers concerned about dental care, strong black coffee is an easy way to prevent cavities, killing large amounts of bacteria every time one drinks it. 
and for teenagers who fear the high rate of depression in young people. Multiple studies have shown that by drinking four or more co cups of coffee every day, the risk of depression goes down by 20%. So although there are people in everyone's lives that perpetuate the idea that if you drink coffee when you're young, it'll do damage to your health of your body and mind, the fact is that the only effect coffee has on your health is a positive one. A common health benefit that I have at least is that it increases your production because you are more focused on the, on your daily tasks, especially if it's throughout the especially if it's during the nighttime, where you where you get really stressed out to the point where you, you feel the urge to sleep, but coffee suppresses that feeling. Um, well, I love coffee because it takes the cobwebs out of my brain and, and sparkles my thinking and, and helps me think more clearly. I mean, they say it's bad for you, but you're gonna die either way. <laughs> I guess it depends on the coffee, because like there's different brands and different styles of coffee. So, um, so pertaining to teens drinking coffee, I think I mean, let them do their thing if they need something to like help them get through the day or something. I mean, it's their choice if they want to drink coffee. I don't think it's like cigarettes or alcohol. So if you need a production rush, coffee is the way to go. There are many more health benefits to drinking coffee than not. And um, I think that they're very good at uh, improving cognitive functions in human beings. They're very good at um, keeping the heart healthy. I think that um, when you're stimulated with caffeine, you tend to exercise more. So there's so many good reasons for drinking coffee. Plus it's fun. As a teenager myself, I think that if you want to drink coffee, do it. There will be adults in your life who tell you that it is not good for your health, or that drinking coffee isn't bad. But the decision on whether or not to drink coffee is ultimately on you. Good morning, welcome to TMC Student News. I am Rizzy and today we are reporting on distracted driving and a more specific uh, texting and driving. Uh, we will be moving to our interviewees now to see what they have to say about this topic. To answer the question is no texting while driving. Nothing, uh, if you have business to take care of, pull aside on the road and take care of the business at hand and then communicate. Uh, continue with your driving. Yes, I have. It was, it was kind of crazy, so, but I'm okay now, so I just told them I don't do that again because uh, that's kind of not, not stupid, so. Um. It's like six of one and half a dozen of the other. It's the same thing. It's just they're, it's, it's just they're done in different ways. It's the idea of that everybody is distracted in one way or another. Have you ever used your phone while driving? Yes, I have. Have you ever been in an accident? I have, not a serious one. Um, but because of that, I no longer use my phone while driving. Unless it's like something direly important, I usually just put my phone off to the side. And I still have the dent in my front car to remind me of that reason. This is Rizzy from TMC Student News, and that concludes our broadcast today. Hope you have a wonderful day. Okay. Hello, my name is Aris Bell, reporting for TMC College. I don't know it has a purple. Legal, so uh, making it legal will help a lot of people, medicine purpose, but I don't know people will take advantage of that, so there's pros and cons, both in being legal. And illegal people get it. Medicine wise, like in California, they use it medicine wise. You know, a lot of people on cancer or diabetes or other stuff, they they use marijuana for coping. 
mechanism, you know, and I have no problem with that, you know, if it's using for my fine and if it's helping with their health, yes, of course, you know, there's benefits to that for many people, of course, it's, it's useful, and if it's used for that purpose, yes, it would be great. I don't have any problem necessarily with marijuana, it's similar to alcohol, um, it's, a, it's a recreational uh, form of narcotic, uh, just like alcohol. Um, obviously, I think there should be some limitations put into it, like for instance with alcohol, uh, with prison fines relating to drug driving and so forth. Same thing should apply to marijuana. It, it, it's relatively uh, uh, the same principle, just different effect. I didn't say that, it's just, okay. it's just, just like alcohol is used for drinking, there's rubbing alcohol, there's alcohol in paint thinner. Alcohol is used for constructive, medicinal, and recreational purposes. Marijuana can probably be used for the same exact things. Okay, so uh, I, I don't believe that uh, marijuana should be um, prohibited based on a stigma. 92% uh, of medical marijuana patients say that the drugs help with the pain. Doctors don't agree with medical marijuana because it still damages your lungs. This is Sadie's breath reporting from TMC. So how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Have you, have you tried Pokemon Go? You have tried this the other day. It, it's a good game. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to get you. Mm -hmm. Hey guys! So Hi. I was wondering if you guys could give me a little bit of advice. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should go to college. Hmm. Did you know many people ages from 17 to 20 have faced the pressure of enrolling in a university and going to college due to increasing stress being put on young people to go to college the amount of students enrolled has increased from 44.1% to in 1989 to 57.3 in 2015. More specifically, in the United States, the average college tuition is $23,000. For out of for out of state residents attending public university, nine thousand for in state residents at public colleges, and thirty two thousand for private colleges. Because college tuition is expensive, many students and graduates are in debt with student loans. In 2012, 71 percent of students graduating from four year college graduated with debt averaging of twenty five thousand. As a youth myself who plans on attending college, debt could be jeopardizing my decision. With roughly 65% of Americans having to attend college and paying a minimum of around $9,000 per year, many high school graduates are debating whether or not colleges would be really worth it, considering the increase in graduates having to find jobs in their major. Many Americans in the U.S., after graduating with numerous degrees, search for a job within the field of major. However, the employment rate for college graduates ages from 20 to 24 this August was 10.8. For those with a bachelor's degree, the number was 10.6%, while those with a master's degree face a 17.2% employment rate. Of 41.7 million working college graduates in 2010, about 48% of the class of 2010 worked jobs that required less than a bachelor's degree. And 38% of those polled didn't even need a high school diploma. Okay, so do you guys have any other advice? Let's go ask our friends. Okay. Hey, my name is Dan Michal. I went to Columbia College, Chicago, started film and video. Uh, after going to college, to Columbia College for film and video, I didn't get a job in my field right away. However, I got an internship with a film production company right away. Uh, my name is Yanette Sandoval and I'm 34 years old. I got my bachelor's degree in social work at UIC. And in between um, getting my master, my bachelor's and getting my master's degree, I also attended another university uh, called the Erickson Institute and I got a certificate or I got involved in a certificate program for um, a certificate degree in child development. Um, so I was working, I guess, working and going to school part-time on both uh, the certificate and the master's degree. Uh, I don't think that the degree is valued more than experience in education. I, it depends a lot, but I think a lot of times uh, real life experience uh, 
can matter even more than a degree. So, nonetheless, a degree is important. When for certain jobs you have to have a degree, and obviously you have to show that you have a degree in the field. But there are times when real life experience can be even more important. Um, in order to survive the um, the workforce, you obviously most jobs right now require you to have. Um, a degree. Most jobs won't hire you unless you have that bachelor's degree firsthand. And um, you also need the work experience. You know, when you first uh, finish your bachelor's degree, you actually need to either get an internship or some type of work experience throughout high school. It also helps, you know, to get some experience there. Um, and you also, you know, need that degree in order for them to hire you. So when you begin working, you're gonna probably not get paid what you want or what you hope for and you're probably not gonna get the job of your dreams um, so you know you're just gonna start getting experience so I think you need both uh, as far as transitioning from college into the real world and getting a job I was provided with some tips but I don't feel like you're hundred percent ready always from college you know so even though my education I think it was great I feel like yeah, it could be more help with transitioning from there to finding a job maybe um, I think it gives you some skills um, that you need some basic skills like you know obviously you know your your math your English and some of those things um, it gives me it gives you some tools, but not everything. Um, uh, for my master's degrees, it was more of a specialty that you actually know what you want to do with a master's degree. So it does give you more tools, and but you have to put it into practice. There's nothing compared to doing an internship and actual working and working with people, and that will give you the experience that you need to know what you're doing. Well, yes and no. So, in the sense of, I feel like I did get a good education, so did I feel like I got a good information, a good education for my money? Yes. However, do I still owe money for my college? Yes, I still owe. I feel like it was too expensive. Unlike most of other civilized countries, we don't have free college here. College should be free and it shouldn't simply be for profit thing. Yeah, overall, yeah, I want to say as far as my education, I went to good school, I got what I wanted out of it, so yeah, it was worth it. As far as having fun during college days, yes, it was worth it, it was fun. As far as how much debt I have, ugh, it's painful and that, no, it wasn't worth it. But then again, had I not went to college, I probably wouldn't have the job that I have right now and so on and so forth, or missed on a lot of other opportunities. Well, college versus no college, it's still debatable whether or not you want to go. It's up to you. It could go to college. It depends on your lifestyle and how you want to better your future, so it's all up to you. Okay, thanks. Bike safety in Chicago may sound like something you learn about in a third grade elementary school classroom, but what most people don't know is bike safety is a lot more important than most people think. The number of daily bicycle commuters has increased from approximately 6,000 in the year 2000 to approximately 15,000 in 2010. This increase in daily riders has brought up the number of bike involved accidents by 27% in the six years between 2005 and 2010. We interviewed three different daily bike riders. Here's what they had to say. 
The biggest safety threat to bikers are cars. I can't stress enough how much drivers should use their turn signals. My friends and I have gotten hit by a car and got many close calls because of a car turning into our lane without their turn signal and without checking their rear view mirrors. Another safety threat is the amount of potholes in Chicago. They pose a huge safety threat to bikers such as myself. What do I think about bike lanes in Chicago? I think that they make biking much more accessible to the average person because bike lanes, um, the infrastructure of bike lanes makes it safer for the average person. Uh, do you think that there are enough bike lanes in the city of Chicago? No. No? No. Uh, why not? Uh, main roads like Irving Park with two lanes of traffic, you can get hit really easily. Okay. Like Ashland too, yeah. The biggest safety threat to, to riding a bike, there are so many things that I look out for. I would say the number one thing that a person riding a bike needs to be aware of is the possibility of being, being it's called being doored. And being doored is when you're riding maybe a little bit too close to parked cars and then automatic or, you know, just like big surprise, a door opens up and you hit it. And it's kind of like just something that you, after you ride in the city for a while, you kind of start to look out for. What, happen, what happens if you get hit by a door? Um, well, you're either going to take his door off and go flying or you're just going to be in a lot of pain.